Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with a review of another Blue Yeti ripoff. So today we're reviewing this guy, the Amazon Basics Professional USB Condenser Microphone. If you do want to pick this guy up, it'll set you back around 100 bucks. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description. For the majority of this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac, where the input gain has zero effect on the recording level. While on the other hand, the microphone's gain is anybody's best guess because there's no indicators or level meters on this thing. I won't do any post-processing though, and I will go ahead and throw something in the doobly-doo down below. And now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. Obviously, you do get the microphone. The desktop stand and mounting system is previously installed. You get a 1.5 meter USB cable and you get some documentation. As far as the build quality, there's really nothing that stands out here. It is just a standard all plastic body with a metal grill. On the front of the microphone, you have four LED lights to indicate what polar pattern you are using. You have a polar pattern selection switch, which is capacitive touch. You have microphone volume controls with a microphone mute button in the middle and directly above that, a light to indicate if the microphone is activated or muted. Then beneath that, you have headphone volume controls, which only controls the playback of your computer's audio. It has zero effect on the zero latency monitoring. And lastly, you got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which does offer zero latency monitoring and does playback computer audio. On the back of the microphone, you'll find a lonely USB port that allows you to connect this to your computer. And on the bottom, it has 5 8 inch threading to mount this to a standard microphone stand. Now, as far as the specs, this thing has cardioid, omnidirectional, bidirectional, and stereo polar patterns. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 45 decibels, a bit depth of 24 bit, and a sampling rate of up to 96 kilohertz, although the headphones peak out at 16 bit 48 kilohertz. I don't know why there's some discrepancy there. Zero degrees on the cardioid polar pattern moving around to 90 to show you the off axis coloration and rejection. We'll go ahead and move around to 180 at the rear to show you how it sounds continuing around to 90 degrees and then we will continue and end at zero degrees in the front. Okay, right now I'm speaking into the microphone on the cardioid polar pattern. Now I'm speaking into the microphone on the omnidirectional polar pattern and this is how the audio sounds. Now we're rocking that bi-directional game and this is how the microphone sounds. And lastly, we're on the stereo polar pattern and this is how the audio sounds. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now, because I'm sure some people will be setting up the microphone just like this, where it's maybe a foot and a half or two away from your mouth on the provided desktop stand on the same desk as your mechanical keyboard and mouse, I'm just gonna give you a brief demonstration of why you shouldn't be doing that and how annoying it would be for anybody listening to you in a voice chat or watching a Let's Play. Oh boy, do I really enjoy playing Fortnite. This is the greatest game of all time. I don't know why anybody would play anything else ever. Okay, right on top of the microphone to show you what kind of proximity effect you can get out of this thing. About three inches away from the microphone, one foot from the microphone, two feet from the microphone, and four feet away from the microphone. Okay, now I have the Amazon Basics Professional USB Condenser Microphone connected to a Windows 10 PC. The gain on the computer is set at negative five decibels, but you're actually not able to adjust this. While the gain on the microphone is just like the Mac, anybody's best guess, but this is how the microphone sounds connected to a Windows 10 PC. Here you have it. Okay, currently on my Mac computer, I have my input volume on the Mac set at 25%, although it says 0%, and I'll just go ahead and show you that no matter where I set this, it has zero impact on the recording level that we are getting, so we will ignore that for this test. Now on the microphone, I have no idea what gain level we're at because there are no indicators or markings. So I'll just go ahead and get to the lowest gain possible and then hold my thumb on the plus button until we get to 100% and the entire time I'll have the spectral analysis on the screen. Okay, this is the quietest level that we have. Now I'll go ahead and hold the plus button to get to 100%.
Now we're at 100%. Amazon is coming for your soul. 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 Okay, so I never get joy out of saying this next sentence, but with this microphone, I feel like I have to. And that sentence is, this microphone sucks. In terms of pros, I really don't think this thing has any redeeming qualities, but if I had to come up with one, I guess I would say this thing does a really good job at plosive rejection because during all of my tests, I never had any issues with that. So I guess, good job, Amazon. But then in terms of cons, the preamp on this thing is just insanely noisy. This thing picks up way too much background noise, even on the cardioid polar pattern. There's no way to adjust the volume of the zero latency monitoring, which means sometimes you will blow out the speakers on your headphones. And then additionally, it's got a couple of quirks, AKA huge design flaws. So the first issue I had was whenever I unplugged or plugged back in my headphones, I had to reset the microphone's gain. Additionally, whenever you unplug the microphone from your computer, your gain is not stored, so you will have to reset it once you reconnect the microphone. Thirdly, the capacitive touch buttons were insanely finicky. One instance that I ran into that drove me batty was whenever I started a new recording, the gain would just jump up, and I would have to hit the gain up button to get it to the level that I had previously set it at, which was significantly lower, so it makes no logical sense. And lastly, there's no indicator of what gain you have the microphone set at. So if you were to be recording a project from day to day, it would be impossible to recall the exact same gain level level and you'd have a lot of variance in that department. So as far as my overall thoughts of this microphone, on the electric guitar, I hated it. There was no way to properly set the gain for that use. When looking at the meters on my computer, I had eight decibels of headroom, so I shouldn't have been clipping, and I couldn't monitor it through the zero latency because that was always clipping, no matter what gain I set my microphone at. So for electric guitar, this mic is completely useless in my opinion, and I personally would never use it for that. For the acoustic guitar, everything sounded pretty honky, but if I was in a bind, I guess you could get away with using the stereo mode because at least you have a nice stereo image. Then for singing, I thought it was way too mid-focused and it added a bit too much nasal tone to my voice. And lastly, for spoken word, I hated the fact that it added this grit to the upper end of my voice. It sounds like it's on the verge of distorting all the time. So would I recommend this microphone? No, absolutely not. Do not buy it. I think Amazon missed the boat completely with this by trying to throw too many features and too much technology into a microphone without having the expertise. So my suggestion to Amazon would be ditch this whole capacitive touch nonsense unless you're going to add an actual display to show the information that's necessary to have a good recording experience. If you're not going to do that, just revert back to analog dials because then you don't have to recall anything. It's stored on the actual dial. Now, because people take bad reviews personally, I know I will inevitably get a comment saying, Bandrew, you're being so harsh. And my response to that is, no, I'm not. I'm not being too harsh. Go buy the Blue Yeti when it's on sale for 90 bucks because it's $10 cheaper than this and it is so much better than this microphone. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Wanna influence what I review? Head over to geeksrising.com slash podcast. Just go cast a vote there. Want more videos like this? Logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server. Link in the description. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.